Hello, this is Traditional Muzzle Loader. My name is Steve Sells. Today I'm going to be shooting my 1858 Remington Army revolver. This one was made by Pieta, and I've done a little bit of modification to it. I deburred and polished all the internals. I've also replaced the fixed post front sight with a dovetail sight, which makes it a little easier to sight in the pistol. Now my best load is with 30 grains of 3F Go-X powder with a lubed felt wad and the Johnson and Dow bullet from Airless Gone bullet folks. The um, target that I'm showing you was fired from sandbags on the bench rest at 15 yards and those are six shots with this Johnson and Dow bullet. Another handy item I'll show you today is this press. I like to load my cylinder out of the pistol. Um, I'm not sure I remember who makes this press, but you can get one similar on the Powder Ink website. So let's take the pistol to back to the shooting range. I'll show you how I load it, and we'll shoot some water-filled jugs. So I prefer to load my revolver cylinder separately from the pistol. This um, gun is most accurate with a 30 grain charge of Go-X 3F powder. I like to use a lubed felt wad between the powder and the bullet. Now it's easy enough to load the revolver with the cylinder still in the gun using loose powder and round ball. It's um, also easy to load a paper cartridge with a round ball inside with the uh, cylinder inside the pistol. But the bullets, especially the Johnston and Dow bullet, they're a little trickier to load because of the design of the frame of the pistol. Also the um, design of the, the seating jag on the loading lever in the pistol is designed to be better for a round ball and it will deform the point of the bullets. Uh, rather than modify the gun, I would just rather load the revolver cylinder separately from the pistol. So um, the press I'm using here, I did make a new seating jag that better fits the pointed shape of the Johnston and Johnson and Dow bullet. And you can see here, you'll notice that when I seat the bullets, I'm shaving off a total complete circle or a ring of lead as it's pressed down into the bullet. Now this ensures that that bullet fits snugly in the chamber and there's no gap between the bullet and the walls of that chamber that could possibly allow hot gases to pass through and ignite the powder. The addition of the felt wad also ensures that hot gas is not going to reach the powder charge from the front of the cylinder. Now as you look at these rings of lead, you'll see some of them are broken just from handling, but every chamber shaves a total complete circle of lead off of the bullet as it's seated. Now placing the caps on, it's important that your caps fit properly. Um, this pistol fits the, um, the Remington size 10 caps fit this pistol perfectly. The CCIs are a little smaller and they're difficult, more, they're more difficult to press on than the Remington size. Now you could change the nipples out or you could modify the nipples to fit the CCI caps, but that's not really necessary. The um, problem with the CCI caps being too small is if I don't get them pressed completely snug down on the nipple, you will have a misfire as the hammer drives that cap down but doesn't have enough force to set it off. So using the proper size caps, in this case being the Remington size 10s, that isn't a problem at all. And the caps fit snug enough that they don't fall off during recoil. So with the cylinder fully loaded, 
it's as safe as a cartridge being fully loaded and it's easily placed back into the revolver and ready to go. Well, the first shot penetrated all six jugs completely, but the second shot seems to have penetrated <clears throat> through the fifth. Well, I was able to find one of the bullets that went through the water jugs. I'll show you a close-up here, but as you can see, there's very little deformation and good engraving into the rifling. Obviously, there's a much longer bearing surface engaged in the rifling than would be with a round ball, and I'm sure that attributes to the accuracy of the bullet. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, um, now that spring is here, we'll be able to go outside and do quite a few more videos. Until the next time, keep your powder dry.